I get the feeling that there's going to be a cutscene cu starting as soon as we go in there, and we can only trigger it from the one side. Yep, there we go. As soon as I stepped far enough in, it started. Miss Allegra, I had hoped that you would return to the Holy City, for you will be grateful to know that the young woman will be out of bed in no time now. Her body has amazingly few scars left to show from the spell that had grievously injured her. She is just resting peacefully right now. I am relieved. Please see this difficult time she faces through with her to the end. Still, would you consider visiting with the dear girl for a little while, Miss Allegra? You see, when Jersey had become well enough to speak a few days ago, she had inquired of where the nurse who had treated her with the most tender compassion in restoring her fragile health had gone off to. I know that Miss Hartshorn wishes very much to express her earnest thanks to you for this. She seems to feel very indebted to you, and it moved my greatly to hear her ask for you the way she had when she'd become capable of speaking the words. I will do that. Our Earthling friends have come to cheer the poor girl also. I am glad. I will leave you all alone to visit Miss Hartshorn, then. I'll be just outside in the hall if needed. Yes, thank you, Annabelle. Trizzy breathes slowly and quietly in her shallow slumber. You think it's creepy for us to be all staring at her while she's asleep? Perhaps we should forego this visit, everyone. Besides, time is of the essence concerning Mr. Sarah's predicament, and what is most important is that we are now assured the sleeping princess before us will live after all. Yes, perhaps you are right, sir. Still, please allow me to stay until she wakes up. Even as I journey back to Meadows to dread of meeting Elowind, all the while I long so much to be here with this brave girl who suffered so much anguish by placing her fragile body before a much greater foe to protect those who approval and friendship she desperately sought. I was struck with guilt to leave her side so soon, even if it was for all of Sebel Han. Conveniently enough, Jersey slowly awakens. Hmm? Jersey? Jersey's eyes now fully open. Ah, Miss Allegra, Mr. Harrison. Jersey turns her head further. Everyone! Yes, we're here. Jersey turns her face back away from everyone. Oh. She probably still feels bad for failing. Please, don't look at me, any of you. I am ashamed to look into the faces of those whom I burdened the most with my foolish pride and helplessness. My dear... We wanted so much to be here with you, having worried so for your well-being but unable to come to you, our poor friend whose delicate body and spirit have been broken by the awful demon warrior. Remember, as I was taking care of you, back when you were still on the verge of death and incapable of speech, you once wrote a message to me even while scarcely able to move a pen, that I was like an angel of mercy to you in such a time of need as you were in. Perhaps you do not know what words like those meant to a confused and haggard elf woman who hardly knows courage from fear anymore. I wish to accept that gratitude from you with formal grace as I should, and to tell you that, Jersey Hartshorn, your angel of mercy is here. Jersey's eyes widen in shock. I... You know you cannot be faulted for anything that happened this entire time. What do you think, Jersey? 
that you actually wished for a Lunas Upper Knight to be discovered marching an army toward this city with the worst of intentions in mind, or that so many had died as a result? Is any of this your fault? And besides, from what Uri and these other three tell us, they were likely spared from being killed right then and there by Gorgon Ghidra because he seemed impressed by how brave you were to willingly or willfully place yourself right in front of him to defiantly shield your friends, even when you knew you had no chance against him. Uh, sure, we'll go with that. No, that that is untrue. No, not really. That's totally the situation. No, it isn't. That's how it happened as far as we're concerned, Jersey. And we don't blame you for anything. It's true that you might have let emotion overcome your sense of reason at the time, but still, anyone would have reacted the way you did. Please don't try to take the weight of the world on your shoulders so much anymore. Thank you, everyone, and I am glad to see that you four, who took this space cadet under their wings in such a frightening and uncertain time as it had been for me, are still alive. I could not have bared to hear of your deaths, just as my other friends who had been with us were lost. Those nine women were as courageous and selfless as you had been, Miss Jersey. Space Cadet? <laughs> Looks like we owe you one. But I have only failed you, all five of you, all of the Holy City. Jersey. Jersey throws her face in her hands. No, don't... Don't look at me! The shame that I bear for my foolish attempts to play the hero is a great enough punishment already. Sob. Okay, we have an unusual situation here. One of our guardian angels is speaking up, and it's not in the correct style of message box. Whoops. Michiru softly says... So, this is what Hotaru and Lorana meant by Jersey still fighting a battle of spiritual wills, even as the Battle of Puesca's Lake is long over. Jersey more calmly says with a sniffle, I even swore to you all on my very soul that I would protect you from harm as you face that demon Gorgon, to keep the darkness from coming one step closer to the goddess's precious city. Her voice becomes more desperate again. I swore that I would not fail as a woman this time. And now look, I am the only one left alive among ten who are willing to give everything to protect the heroes of Vivenia in their most dire battle. I cannot help but feel as though I utterly failed everyone who ever tried to love me. Miss Jersey, what was it I had said to you the night we were alone on the balcony? Do you remember? I said that you never need to prove yourself to others in order to gain their love. And I meant that. All of us here, I am sure, love you very much, regardless of who you are. Desperate thinks his last words. No, it is because of who you are that we love you as our friend. And we are not worthy of your friendship if we reject you because of weaknesses that you may think exist in your heart. Sniff, everyone. This, this is it, isn't it, Priyan? This is what Madison meant when she said I would soon have the chance to save someone. And she was referring to Jersey, wasn't she? It is entirely up to you now, kid. Make the decision now whether or not you want to try to mend her broken spirit in any way that you are able. And if so, then do your best. That is all of the wisdom I can offer to you in this. 
I am slightly concerned about Uri trying to make her feel better. That kind of failed the last time Uri was relied upon for this sort of thing. Hey, Jersey. Um, would you like to talk with me alone for a while? Maybe that would help you feel better somehow. Uri? I... I do not understand. Well, I... Sorry, dang it. This is really awkward. It's just that... I would like to try to cheer you up, if I possibly can, you know? So... Would you mind? It... It is alright with me. It's fine with you all? To Saren Nas, it is not our place to object. Yes, it is. You must have good reason to do this. Yeah, it's cool. We'll be right outside, okay? Thanks. I won't be long. Then we'll get going to Ferris Dow. Hey, should you be standing on your feet right now, Jersey? I mean, it was only just 30 minutes ago that you even awoke. I will be fine, thank you. I am already feeling much better, and I cannot remain confined to this bed forever. Speak the truth, Uri. You have already shown far more consideration for me than I deserve by sending everyone else away so that I won't be embarrassed before them all. So, if you wish to take revenge for the wrong I have done in letting you and your friends be defeated by Gorgon Ghidra that day, then please do not hesitate. I do not deserve your sympathy. Ari angrily says, Do you really think that, Jersey? That... That is what I came here to do? To accuse or strike you for the sake of revenge? Jersey's eyes widen. Dang it! Why do you continue to allow this? The sense of inferiority and failure to hang upon your shoulders alone. I... Wait. Harry clenches his fist. I really want to know, who could it have been in your far past that tore your spirit down so cruelly that what you have become now is the end result? Who could have kept berating you that you are as worthless and foolish as you now deem yourself? Because I swear, if I ever find that person, I will beat him within an inch of his life until you, he begged for your forgiveness and made you feel like a whole person again. But I... No, you are not a worthless excuse for a human being that you think you are. In anything, out of the two of us, it is I who is worthless. You just aren't perfect, that's all. I swear, a single lost feather in one of your wings and suddenly you believe you cannot fly any longer. Harry clues this control. You are still our friend, and you mean enough to us. So don't try so hard to be anything more than that. You never failed us, nor do you need forgiveness for anything. Irene now more calmly says, You are stronger than you believe, Jersey. You are not a bad person, and you can still fly with the rest of the angels. So please, just stop letting the darkness inside your good heart grow stronger before it takes you completely, like what happened to the ones who became the Lunas Elro Knights. I won't lose someone like you, who truly means well, to the shadows of fear and self-doubt. Jersey looks away, her eyes beginning to softly cry. I'm sorry, Jersey. I didn't mean to yell at you like that. It's just that 
I had to make this darkness in you go away somehow, because I know that you yourself cannot do anything to prevent it. No, I... Sniff, I just... I'm wondering how I can still be like this angel you speak of to the ones who love me this unconditionally. Exaggerated sigh. You know, you Alvinian girls with your purest no hearts and your transparent emotions give me such a headache sometimes. Yet all the way out, I just don't think I could live without you. I couldn't stop thinking about what it was becoming of you ever since the day we had to leave you by yourself, as broken as you were, on the field where Gorgon nearly killed you. I swear it to you, I know that you did not mean for any of those women with us to be slain, any more than you meant for the four of us to nearly follow suit at Gorgon's hands. You fought very hard to protect everyone in the place that you call your home, and that alone makes you one of the most caring people I know, and no one can blame you for that, Jersey. No one. Hurry. Sorry, what is it? I just want to say thank you. You are a true friend. For this, I will be loyal to you and the other three to the end. That much, I know I can promise. <laughs> we know, Jersey. We know. Now, I can finally ask you and your friends, on behalf of myself and the goddess who can scarcely be felt by anyone in this world right now, but whom I know in my heart is right here at my side, encouraging me to do what I am about to do at this very moment. Ask? Of me and the others? Yes. I realize it is unforgivably selfish of me to make this request of you or anyone else after I had already asked the four of you to trust me with your lives during the battle at the lake, and yet it had all ended in disaster. No, say nothing, Uri. That much is true, even if you see I need not be blamed for failing to keep my promise, but I still ask for just one more chance. Please. I know my heart must be the most wayward part of my being because of the wild range of emotions that afflict me day by day as my life unfolds in its crazy way before me, and so you might think me foolish for trying to justify my request by saying that my heart is in, in it. Still, Jersey lifts her head, her eyes shining. Please take me with you and the others on your journey to save Elvinia. Yep, I had a feeling that was she, what was she was going to be asking. And that is pretty much my reaction too. Are you crazy? You just got off of your deathbed and you want to join us already? Let me be at your side in the trials you must face. I want now more than anything to help you all in my own way. By facing this evil you have been railing against all this time through the same eyes that you all have, not just in spirit, but by sword and magic as well. What? Jersey, I... I can't do that! Uri... No, I'm sorry, Jersey. I know how much you want to protect the people that you hold precious, and you have every right to. But still, your will at heart just won't be enough. I just wish that I didn't have to say it, but it's true. The power that we've come to possess has barely proven strong enough to stand against the Dark Lord and his servants, much less yours. You know that we would protect you to our dying breaths, but as you stand now, so fragile and delicate, there is no way you could hope to survive. But please understand... Jersey calmly responds, I am not hurt or sorrowful at what you say, my friend, for there is no way I could convince you otherwise. I can barely stand upright on two feet without feeling almost too weak to continue even talking right now, and I now wear a face that is permanently scarred from a spell that perhaps only through sheer willpower on my behalf did not take my life instantly. Still... 
Do you promise not to berate me further if I tell you something? Of course I won't. I had a dream that night, Uri, on the day in which I had looked up into the eyes of a man who held a mighty scythe in his hands that looked capable of reminding me to pieces of uh, rending, rending me to pieces in mere seconds. As I lay here in this bed later that night, my entire body wrecked with the painful chill that Gorgon's spell still held over me, barely conscious of the nurses who fought to keep my heart from stopping dead, I saw her. I saw the goddess of fate herself. She was as real to me then as you are now, and I realize what it is like to be immersed in such peace of spirit that, truly, to be with Serena, the Divine Mother, is to stand in a light where there is no darkness at all, not one shred. Jersey, please. No, you must listen. It wasn't just out of blind faith or the overactive imagination of a human being in desperation, Uri. I'm kind of glad that you knew that is what he was thinking. Because he totally was. She, my ever-faithful mother, was so real to me in my time of need. And she told you it would be alright to come with us? I know now. I know now that your reassurance that I had done my best to protect you all was sincere. She... Serena spoke to me, saying that you all would forgive me. And, more than that, she bids me to learn to forgive myself. She also gave me the blessing of her strength. The strength to fight directly at the size of those I love against the monster called the Lord of Darkness. If only you all would but tell me that I may do so. So I plead, let me come with you. Please give me this one last chance, not to prove my worth to you all as your friend, but to show it. But what else should happen if you... Don't say that. Look, I won't make a promise in haste this time. I will not promise that I'll live to see the day when Elvinia is saved from the Lord of Darkness, nor will I even promise that I will be able to protect my friends from the evil we must fight along the way. All I will do is simply tell you that I will try with all of my heart and soul, that is all, because I see that I am only human after all, and I do not want to risk breaking a promise even when I have the best of intentions. You have what an Elvinian would call the strength of heart, Jersey. I'll give you that. But still, how could one human girl who just happens to possess some magical powers possibly face the kinds of monsters we face and live? You'll die this time if you face one of the Lunas over nice, Jersey. Too many people in this world I have seen die already. Precisely because they, like you, tried to stand up to an evil force that few mortal creatures could ever hope to have a chance against. The power of evil is beyond us. Yes, beyond even Harrison, Lynn, Dusk, or myself, no matter how strong you might think we have become. And worse yet, magic just continues to fade from the world, it seems. I realize that, Uri. It was apparent to me the day that a creature of darkness who stood head and shoulders above my petite mortal body had raised his hand against me. But I have been given such a power that can stand up to that evil now. It is a miraculous change that has come over me, something that could only have come as a gift directly from the hand of she who created me. My senses have sharpened. My body has become almost as inhumanly defiant to physical harm as yours has, and an inordinate amount of magic now flows through my hands, and not even dying faith can or will smother it anymore. It is not the power to destroy life, but to do as you do, Uri. 
to fight for those who cannot fight for themselves. So please, I ask this just once more. Please allow me to come with you and see, on this journey we must make on our own two feet across Alvinia, just what makes this world worth protecting from evil. Please tell me that this is no longer just a fight of our of four humans who came from their own world to save this one. You may think it is folly for a human being to make promises, Jersey, but I am going to promise you this anyway. I am not going to let you die. As long as any of the rest of us are still standing, no one shall claim your life. So, welcome to our quest, Jersey Hartshorn. Jersey slowly begins to smile. I am no longer afraid or ashamed to say these things to the people in my life, but I love you. You all are what is most important to me. You know, Alvinian girls just don't come any sweeter than you. And so, Jersey joins the team. I'm sure she is still kind of in the weekend state, but hey, it's a video game. People do this all the time. <laughs> 